All right, well, it's that time of year again where we're winding down to the final year of the decade and the final days of the year. These are going to be my top 10 best and worst films that we're going to be discussing. But first, we're going to start off with the top, off with the 10 best films of the year. And then tomorrow, I will be discussing my final, my top 10 worst films of 2019. And then on the new year, we're going to be discussing my top 10 most anticipated of the of 2020 and then at the new year we're going to be discussing my top tw- my top 10 most ante- <clears throat> and at the end and at the beginning of the year we're going to be discussing my top 10 most anticipated films of 2020 so without a further ado let's go ahead and begin with my top 10 best films of the year with some honorable mentions that even though these are some great movies it was very difficult to leave off the list but I really enjoyed all of these films and I can't wait to see what 2020 has in store for us. Some honorable mentions include John Wick Chapter 3, How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World, Shazam, Ready or Not, They Shall Not Grow Old, Rocket Man, Hustlers, and Us. All those films I mentioned are great. I enjoyed all of those, especially some of them that were really surprising. But now let's go ahead and get into the top 10 best films of the year. At number 10, I have one of my probably biggest surprises that I had this year because I had not seen any trailers for this movie. I had very little knowledge of what the movie was and what the themes of the film were. But I came out with a huge smile and it basically made me come out saying that even though Shia LaBeouf has some interesting behind the scene moments for the, within the past couple of years. The Peanut Butter Falcon is definitely one of the biggest surprises of the year. I think this movie was fun. It was enjoyable. There were some heartbreaking moments. I think Dakota Fanning, Zach Godskin, Shia LaBeouf all did a wonderful and magnificent job in this film. And I really enjoy this film. I need to go back and rewatch it again because I think this is a movie that a lot of people should go out and support. And I just came out with a smile and I can't wait to see what everybody in this film does next. And number nine, I have probably the only film on the list that it not only is the longest film on the list, but it's also the long, the most viewed movie that I've seen this year. I saw this movie five times in theaters, and I've seen it a billion times on Disney Plus and on DVD. And I can probably recite almost every single line. It's one of the reasons my friends won't even come close to watching this movie with me ever again. And that is Avengers Endgame. Avengers Endgame was probably one of the biggest surprises that we've had this year because not only is it wrapping wrapping up a 22 film saga, it's also doing a lot at once and it's trying to have a wonderful payoff that left us hanging with Infinity War. And it not only are there some great moments in this film, but when you get those first 15 minutes of the film... You don't know where the film is going after Thor chops Thanos' head off. And that was a really great... And one thing that I really enjoyed about this film is the fact that we didn't get a lot of action in this film. We just centered around characters that we've come to love for the past 10 years. Just trying to figure out how we're going to get out of this mess that, that we were brought into. And what can we do to not only just bring everybody back, but, you know, destroy these stones so that... That else can't get them anymore, and I really enjoyed the chemistry that everybody brought in this film. I enjoyed what this film was, and if you have told me back in 2016 that Captain America: Civil War was going to be probably the one movie event that you that I could go back to and relive all over again, I would have told you that it would have been nuts. But now seeing it and realizing, watching it a billion times. Endgame is definitely one of the things that probably it's probably going to be one of the films that I would go back all over again and erase it from my memory and watch it all over again because I really enjoyed this film. Yeah, it has its logic problems, but the payoff is amazing and I really enjoyed this film so much. And number eight, we have a film that 
a lot of people were really hesitant because it ended a series nine years ago and a lot of people were worried if this was going to be another seamless cash grab or if there wasn't going to be anything but Toy Story 4 is one of the films that I actually came out enjoying a lot more than I did with Toy Story 3. I think this is the first film that I saw, the first Toy Story film that I saw in theaters. I didn't ever, I never saw Toy Story 3 in theaters or 2 and 1. But I really enjoyed what I got with Toy Story 4. And if they decide to make a Toy Story 5, count me in. Because I think not only did it end... Not only did it end Woody's story arc, but it also had some amazing payoffs. There were some great characters. Some standouts were from Key and Michael Key and Peel. And I think this movie was enlightening. It was fun. It was heartbreaking. And I think this is probably going to be one of my favorite endings to a film, notwithstanding Endgame. At number seven, we have a film that I was really excited for. It was not a the theme that I that I'm very familiar with but I enjoyed the people that were cast in this film and it brought shed a new light on a new star and that is fighting with my family I think fighting with my family was funny it was engaging it was exciting there was a lot of great moments in this film I think Stephen Merchant did a magnificent job directing this film and I really enjoyed what he brought to the character it also gave us Florence Pugh who is having one hell of a year she has Midsommar, Little Women, Black Widow coming out in May I decided to see She's one of the most amazing and talented people that I'm really excited to see further because she not only is she taking different roles, but she also brings a level to them that you wouldn't expect from somebody else. But I really enjoyed this film. It's funny. It's engaging. I'm not a big wrestling fan, but this movie was really, really fun. And and I just came out having one hell of a time with it. In 2019, we didn't just have one directorial debut. We had two. And in this one, I think it's a little bit better, but I enjoyed the film a lot more. And that comes from Olivia Wilde's Booksmart. I think Booksmart was really funny, fresh, amazing. It was probably this generation super bad. I think Olivia Wilde did a really good job. Caitlin Dever and Beanie Fieldstein really pulled a wonderful job with these characters. I think they played off well one of the, I think they played off well one of each other. And this movie not only gave us those two, but it also gave us Billy Lord, who was probably one of the standout following Tyler Gazzotto. I think everybody in this film did a great job. The script was amazing. The acting, the directing, everything. I had a great time with this film. If you guys have not checked this out, go ahead and do yourself a favor. Go ahead and check this out because I think this is a fantastic film that everybody should go out and support. At number five, we have a film that I was really excited to see. Ryan Johnson did a really good job with The Last Jedi. I know a lot of people hate that movie and hate what he did with that film. But I think he did a wonderful job with Knives Out. And I think this is one of the best whodunit films that we've seen in a long while. I think the acting, the directing, the cast is phenomenal in this film. Everything from Ana de Armas, who was basically the primary character in this film, aside from... Lakeith Stanfield and Daniel Craig I think she did a really good job and I'm really excited to see what she does next because I think she is amazing she's beautiful she's talented and this film not only was it predictable at times when it came down to the reveal I think this film is probably one of the best films that I've seen this year I wish it was higher but I really enjoyed this film I give it a thumbs up if you guys haven't seen this film go ahead and check it out I can't wait to see it again because this movie is enlightening it's fun and you just don't see murder mysteries like this anymore and number four we have a film that I was really excited to see the trailers were on point the posters were on point and the casting and directing were on point even if it came from a unlikely director Todd Phillips did a wonderful job with Joker and I think this is probably the most this this movie is probably one of the most controversial films that we've had in a while because of everything that the f people were saying about the film. It was promoting violence and all that. Didn't see none of that in the film. I think this movie was told magnificently. I'm hopefully now reaching a billion. Hopefully this movie stays as a standalone film because I really enjoyed this film a lot. Because I really enjoyed this film a lot. It was... 
probably the most heart racing movie that I've seen this year or in a long while. Within every single moment that we've had that we had in this film, I was really gripped to the sea. I want to know what happened next. There, this isn't a movie that is easy to watch multiple times, but I think this movie is magnificent. I think this movie is going to earn Joaquin Phoenix a Academy Award nomination. I think this movie is magnificent. This is going to be. This would have been higher on the list, but there were a couple of other films that I saw this year that were really more exciting and I enjoyed a lot more. At number three, we have Ford v Ferrari. This isn't a movie that I'm really into, just like fighting with my family because I'm not a huge race car, <clears throat> I'm not a huge NASCAR fan. I enjoy some of the ra some of the drivers, but with James Mangold behind the camera, Matt Damon and Christian Bale together in front of the cameras. I think this movie was probably the most fun that I had in the film that isn't based on a comic book film. I think this movie is exciting. It's enjoyable. The performances are amazing. Hopefully this gets some Oscar buzz as well. And I really enjoyed this film because I just came out reviewing it and raving about it so much that I really enjoy it. If you guys haven't seen Ford v Ferrari, go ahead and check it out because you are robbing yourself out of an experience and a wonderful treat. Now we come down to the final two and the final two were almost a flip-flop but I think Uncut Gems is probably a close first but definitely a second because I really enjoyed this film. This movie was a really good surprise. I enjoyed the trailer for it. I'm not big with Adam Sandler's comedy recently but I've always wanted to see him do more dramatic roles because I saw Men, Women, and Children that came out a couple of years ago. Even though I didn't enjoy that film to a certain degree I think Adam Sandler was great in that performance and I want him to do a lot more of these dramatic performances because I think he really shines in those performances. His comedies are probably long gone, but I really enjoyed what he brought to the table with this film. This was the first time me this was my first time watching a Safdie's Brothers film and they did a wonderful job. Kevin Garnett, Lakeith Stanfield again st stealing scenes in this in this film and this year. And I really enjoyed this film. Last 20 of this, the last 20 minutes of this film is really intriguing. It's heart racing. And you just want to root for this guy who is basically just robbing everybody's money, placing bets, trying to dig his, himself out of this hole that he's in. And I really enjoyed this film. The Safdie brothers did a wonderful job and I can't wait to see what they do next. And now we land to my favorite film of the year. This is a movie that I was really excited for. The trailers were great. The director was probably is probably one of my favorite directors working today. And the cast seemed really, really amazing. Even though they were some unknown. But it's pro Jojo Rabbit is my favorite film of the year. Because not only is it different. It re not only did... This movie rewrite history just like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood did, but it does it in a way where it's not offensive. You don't come out feeling offended. It cracks jokes in the film, but it really has a really somber and wonderful tone in this film towards the end of the film. If you see some shoes, you're going to bawl your eyes out, I think. Everybody in this film did a wonderful job. I think one of the standouts is Archie Yates and I can't wait to see what he does next because I think he was wonderful as Jojo's friend. And also Tom Lynn McKenzie who was in Leave No Trace which was one of my favorite films of last year. I think she did a wonderful job and I'm really pulling for Ben Griffin Davis because I think he did a wonderful job as Jojo. This movie is hysterical. Taika Waititi did a wonderful job directing, writing, and playing. I can't believe I'm saying this. Hitler. But I think he did a really good job in this film. And it's everybody from Scarlett Johansson, Alfie Davis, Stephen Merchant, and Sam Rockwell. Everybody in this film did a really good job. They pulled off a wonderful, surprisingly good film. And I think that... This is going to be a movie that I'm going to be rewatching a lot because even the ending is bittersweet and I enjoyed what they were going for and I really enjoyed this film a lot. Those are my top 10 best films of the year. Like I said, tomorrow we're going to be doing the worst films of 2019 and then January 1st we're going to be doing the top 
10 most anticipated films of 2020. So look forward to that. And if you like this list, go ahead and drop yours down in the comments. See what you liked. We will agree on some of the films. Maybe we won't agree on any other films. But go ahead and drop your list down in the comments. What you think of it. And if you like this video, go ahead and like click that like and subscribe button share it around and there are some reviews for this film on my on my channel i might put the, post the links on the bio if you want to check those out as well but if you want me to review most of these films that i haven't reviewed on my channel since i kind of started a little bit early and then didn't do a lot more till probably june Go ahead and let me know if you want to see reviews for these films. And also let me know what you also want me to review in the future if you want. And until next time, this is Josie Reviews.